Hi, let's talk about how to predict the formulas for simple ionic compounds. So as a reminder, an ionic compound is what you get when a positive ion attracts to a negative ion because opposite charges attract. So cations and anions are a necessary part of any kind of ionic compound. So in order to predict whether something's a what form is something going to have, you have to understand that certain things are likely to take certain charges. Nonmetals are likely to take a negative charge, and metals are likely to take a positive charge. This is the line that separates metals and nonmetals. And then it gets kind of fuzzy around here. But this red line I'm drawing here, it separates the metals and the nonmetals. So we need to understand something. The position of something on the periodic table will tell you not only um, what it's likely to be positive or negative, but what its charge is likely to be, because you need to know that in order to accurately predict what formula it will take when you put two ions together. So again, nonmetals over here tend to be negative. Metals over here, except for hydrogen. Hydrogen is not a metal, um, at least not under normal earth conditions. Um, it metals te non metals tend to be positive, though hydrogen also does become a positive ion. So anyway, um, there's something that must be memorized in order to predict what you get when you put a positive ion together with a negative ion. You have to know what the charges are. So it is necessary to memorize everything in this column, including hydrogen, is assumed to be a plus one. Everything in this column is assumed to be a plus two ion when it memor when it ionizes. So these ionize to be a plus one charge. These become a plus two charge. These are all variable. At least the metals here become a plus three charge. And then this is variable here. And then these things, or at least the nonmetals, become a minus three charge. So we just assume a minus three charge here. These become a minus two charge in this column. Things in this column are assumed to be a minus one charge. And things here are no charge because they do not form ions. So this is something that must be memorized the pattern of plus one, plus two, plus three, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. So knowing that, it is now possible to predict what is the formula of a combination of two of these things. Because, for example, what if you took fluorine and beryllium? So if you want to come up with a formula for fluorine and beryllium, you have to memorize that Fluorine being in this position, this position is minus one charge, so we represent minus one like that. And then beryllium is in a plus two position, so plus two charge, like that. And then the first thing we've got to do is recognize a major important rule. Cations go first. This is a super important thing. So if I say find the formula of fluorine and beryllium, the very first thing you're going to do is switch those around because positively charged cations always go first in the chemical formula. So beryllium goes before fluorine. Now I said earlier fluorine's a minus charge, beryllium is a plus charge. Big idea here, the positive charge must equal the negative charge so that it must equal zero. Now if you have one beryllium with a two plus charge, uh, two fluorine atoms with a minus charge will be necessary to balance that out because that way the negative charge adds up to the positive charge. There is an easy way to figure this out though because it can get more complicated because what if you have a plus three charge and a minus two charge? Or a plus 12 charge and a minus 17 charge? I don't know, I'm just making stuff up, but you get the idea. Um, a quick, short way to deal with this is to do what I call the crisscross method. And now the way you predict the formula is you switch the numbers and it becomes the formula. So here's how that works. Uh, ignore the plus, ignore the minus, so it's just a minus one and a plus two. Ignore that. Let's just look at the numbers. Bring this one down here, one beryllium. Bring this two down here, two fluorines. What it's telling us is the formula contains one beryllium and two fluorines, which is actually the correct formula. Um, remember, the number one is not written in the final formula but numbers greater than one are written in the final formula. So this would be the formula of beryllium and fluorine. Okay, let's look at some others. What if we wanted to have a formula involving, oh, let me take a look at the periodic table and get some inspiration here. Um, 
what if we wanted to do sulfur and sodium? So we look at the periodic table. Once again, sulfur is in the minus two column, sodium is a plus one column. So sulfur is a minus two, sodium is a plus one. So remember, put the positive one first, Na, negative one last, this right here. Sodium is a one plus charge, sulfur is a two minus charge. Oops, that's not very clear, but you get the idea. All right, ignore the signs. Just put the two down here, put the one down here. So it becomes Na2S. Remember, don't write the one. Now let's look at some other variations of this. So um, that first example was one where there's one of the first one, two of the second one. Here was one, two of the second one, and one of the first one. Um, what if you have two things of the same charge? What if you have sodium and, let's say, bromine? Again, looking at the periodic table, sodium is a plus one, bromine is a minus one. So plus one, minus one. So Na is a plus, Br is a minus. Crisscross method. Bring this one down here, bring this one down here. Remember, this represents a one. So one sodium, one, sodium, one bromine makes NaBr. That's your final formula. Now, more complicated version of this. Watch this. What if you have something like a, mm, oh, let's say aluminum and phosphorus. So phosphorus and aluminum. Looking those up on the periodic table, let's see, where do I have that? I really should set that aside so it doesn't take me so long to find it. All right. Um, Aluminum is in the plus three column. Phosphorus is in the minus three column. So that's what you assume. Phosphorus minus three, aluminum plus three. All right, well, remember, put the positive one first. Al plus three. Phosphorus, the negative one second. P minus three. Switch the numbers. Al three, P three. So this three goes down here to make a three here. This three goes here to make a three right here. So Al3P3 is not the final formula, because remember, a formula, a chemical formula is a ratio. You can reduce this. Unlike previous examples where this cannot be reduced, and neither can the other ones that have been done, like this, this can be reduced. A 3 to 3 ratio reduces to a 1 to 1 ratio. So that means this reduces to ALP, and that's it. It's very important to remember, if the ratio can be reduced, it must be reduced. So that includes other types of ratios. Like imagine you had a tin and oxygen. Now wait, where's tin? Tin is right here. It's variable charge. So let's do a case where tin happens to be a plus four. Tin can be many different charges. Let's say it's a plus four and oxygen's a minus two. So tin is Sn plus four. Oxygen is, oops, minus two. Switch the charges. Put this two here, two tins. Put this four here, four oxygens. That's Sn2O4. That's a two to four ratio. We have to understand that reduces, divide by the smallest number, divided by two, divided by two. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this reduces to a 1 to 2 ratio. So this reduces to a 1 tin, 2 oxygens. All right, that would be how you handle a formula like that. Okay, well, do the things I say make sense? If so, go ahead and try these out. You should be able to predict what formulas each of these represents. Uh, give it a shot, pause the video, and then you can resume and I will show you how to get these. All right, I assume you pause, so let's just go through each of these really quickly, what it would be. Calcium and nitrogen. Look up on the periodic table. Calcium is a plus two, nitrogen is a minus three. Let's see, where is it? Right there. So, Ca plus two, and the positive one goes first, nitrogen minus three. 
So put the 3 here, put the 2 here, CA3N2. Uh, let me write that a little clearer. Okay. All right, next. Potassium and sulfur. Potassium on the periodic table is a plus 1. And it goes first because it's positive. Sulfur is a minus 2. So I put the 2 here. I put the 1 here. K2S is my final formula. Next, chlorine and strontium. So chlorine is a minus charge. Strontium is a plus 2 charge. This is minus 1 for chlorine, by the way. Again, I know that from chlorine being in the minus 1 column, strontium being in the plus 2 column. And then uh, I need to put the positive one first. So strontium should be first. Chlorine should be second, because the positive thing always goes first. Put this number 1 down here. Put this number 2 down here. So 1 strontium and 2 chlorines would be the formula for this one. Here, oxygen and calcium. Oxygen, according to this, is a minus 2. Calcium is a plus 2. So O minus 2, Ca plus 2. Now let's put this in the right order. Ca first. O second, because it's negative. So that's two calciums and two oxygens if I switch the charges around. So Ca2O2, that reduces to CaO, a 2 to 2 ratio reduces to a 1 to 1 ratio. So that's the correct formula there. Iodine and sodium. Sodium is a plus 1, iodine is a minus 1. So I minus Na plus, put them in the correct order, Na plus goes first, I minus goes second. Put the 1 here and put this 1 here, as in switch the numbers to get one sodium and one iodine, or NaI. Next, iron with a four charge and sulfur. So we're saying, telling you, iron is a charge of plus four. No need to look it up on the periodic table. And then sulfur is a minus two charge. So positive one goes first, Fe plus four, S minus two. Switch the charges, two irons, four sulfur. So Fe two, S four. Ah, that reduces a 2 to 4 ratio, reduces to, let's see, divide that by 2, divide that by 2. So this divided by 2 is 1, and this divided by 2 is 2. So that means a 2 to 4 ratio is the same as a 1 to 2 ratio. So 2 to 4 is equal to 1 to 2 ratio. So that's why that's the correct formula. And finally, sometimes instead of just telling you the elements, we'll tell you the actual chemical name. This is the actual chemical name for a substance. It tells you lithium is bound to oxygen. Lithium has a plus one charge according to its location on the periodic table. Oxygen is a minus two charge. So I'll put a minus two there. And then I'll put this two down here. And I'll put this one down here. Switch the charges, right? And so that's two lithiums and one oxygen for the final formula looking like that. All right, there you have it.